Hey there, you lovely denizens of Southern Tomfoolery listener land. It's your old amigo Heath here, just checking in on you guys at the top of the ep. Um, You know, it's been a long, strange journey for Titanium Mike, everybody's favorite lizard man, boxer turned bodyguard, and I've really enjoyed all the twists and turns along the way. But I've got to say, it's a strange feeling being the only remaining member of the original APA crew. I've got all these fond memories of battling and bickering alongside Fell, Madame Ziva, Aaron, and Xeno-5. But now this unbreakable Vesk has got to be feeling a little lonely, despite the fact that he's not technically alone. And while it's been interesting and fun getting to know Tenna and Trelax, Gloombot, and of course Kuiper Vargas, I can't help but think Mike probably longs for the old days. Before all this shadow corruption and all these people from the shadow plane came crashing into his life. But, as we all know, Mike's a fighter. And he's not going to give up in his quest to get that life back. To get his friends back. Because in all honesty, other than 250 plus pounds of muscle and an office back at Absalom Station, they're all he's got. So while it's a weird feeling being the only APA member left on the roster... You better believe Mike will make sure he's not the last, or he'll die trying. Anyway, before I spend any more time waxing poetic about the toughest goddamn Vesk anyone's ever seen, I wanted to hit you with some updates and reminders for the Southern Tomfoolery Network moving forward. First, let's talk about STF and Friends. If you aren't aware, STF and Friends is a live stream show we've been hosting to dip our toes into Twitch with a few cast members as well as guests from other projects. The next episode will be Monday, February 21st at 6 p.m. Central, where Adam, Emily, and I, as well as Tyler from the Min Max podcast and Ann Hearthsinger Richmond, will continue our playthrough of the Starfinder module Junker's Delight. If you haven't checked it out, you can find the previous episodes on our YouTube page, and if you're all caught up, we'd love to see you live and in person on Twitch. We're getting close to wrapping up Junker's Delight, and it's been an absolute blast, so I've got to thank Tyler and Anne for making it such a fun and memorable experience, as well as Adam for GMing it and Emily for joining in on all the fun. What's next for STF and Friends, you might be asking? Well, when we finish Junker's Delight, yours truly will get a turn at the old Game Master Chair. We're going to put together a new cast for a short Starfinder run beginning with, and I'm very excited to announce this. The Great Graph Train Robbery. But that's all I'm going to tell you now. We'll hit you guys with some more info soon, so keep your ears perked up around the network for those juicy deets. That massive news aside, I'd also like to say thanks to all the folks that support us on Patreon. Because of you fine people, and I do mean fine, we are very close to hitting our Patreon goal to make STF Conline an annual event. We had a phenomenal time gaming with so many members of the Southern Tomfoolery community at the first ever STFCon line. If you weren't able to attend or you just don't know what I'm talking about, STFCon line is a full weekend of online tabletop gaming with the cast and community of Southern Tomfoolery where there will be slots you can sign up for playing Starfinder, Pathfinder, 1st and 2nd Edition, D&D, and other game systems, all hosted and GM'd by members of the community and cast members from your favorite shows on the STF network. After the first STF Con line, we made it a Patreon goal to make this thing happen every single year, and we're within a Titanium Mike Bodyguard feat's distance of reaching that goal. So if you've been considering upping your Patreon pledge or you've been on the fence about supporting, there's never been a better time. And if you can't afford it right now, that's fine too. You'll still be able to sign up for slots in games during the con, but only if we hit this goal. So if nothing else, help spread the word. Tell your friend about the podcast. Word of mouth is a powerful force for smaller networks like ours. So every little bit helps. If the 150 plus episode count of our APA story is intimidating or daunting, we'd love the support for our second show, Live and Let Fly, and it's a lot easier to get caught up on. And we're really proud of Live and Let Fly as well, and we're having a really great time playing new characters and a wholly different kind of story revolving around working class folk just trying to make their way as sort of space truckers in the Starfinder universe. Okay, I know this has been a long one, but before I get out of here, I also wanted to remind you guys of the Southern Tomfoolery promo code for our wonderful dice sponsors, Norse Foundry. 
Go check out their huge assortment of fantastic looking dice and find a set that speaks to you. And when you do, go to check out, put in the discount code STF, all capital letters, and get 15% off your order. All that said, I hope you're all doing well. We love you guys, not only for the support you've shown us, but for the community we've all fostered together. I mean, we love telling these stories and playing these characters you've come to love or maybe hate. So, that said, enjoy the episode. It's number 156, Benny's Tomb Gloom Room. I'm getting back to that mindset that, or that creeping feeling that I always get as we start closing in on a book and even more so as we're closing in on the end of an adventure. I don't know if you guys feel this, uh, Zach, I think we're closing in towards the end of book one of Live and Let Fly or Fly Fairy Die. Uh, and it may be different for you. One of the same, for, man. It's one of the yeah, same. Whatever but, that thing's name. But for me, like whenever, whenever we start getting close to the to the end of a book, and I guess it's been more so, not so much like book one type stuff, but as we've built this story and everything, and like I just start getting anxious, you know, and I, I just I'm looking down the barrel of like six to ten weeks of just being stressed. <laughs> as we as we as we are do you, this are you worried you're gonna fuck it up adam i mean yeah a little <laughs> a little i mean there's there's still a lot of threads out there that have mm-hmm. to to have to be tied together and like i want to make sure that the you know that the end of the book is satisfying for you all as players too like that that the uh that you're challenged in a meaningful way and that you know the fight isn't too easy but it isn't too hard and all those types of things, you know, and it just, I just start thinking about it a lot. Does, mm-hmm. Do y'all f- have those feelings? Well, Adam, listen, man, I just want to tell you, dude, <clears throat> if you don't manage to pull it off spectacularly, we're going to lose all of our listeners and all of our Patreon money. So no pressure, okay? No pressure. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> God. All um, of our creds no. will go down <laughs> the fucking yep. toilet. It's all over with, dude. It's yep. all over with. Yep. Everything we've built to this point. For nothing. Man, I know I can really count on you to kind of <laughs> help me help me with my confidence. I appreciate it. Really, just um, add a stabilizing factor there. You're doing great, Adam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it's gonna be fine, great. man. I think it's I, gonna be great. I kind of look forward to like book threes and like wrap up kind of stuff. Like I, I get more excited towards those parts. I feel like I just for my personal vibe, I do a lot better in book one and book three. Like I always hit a lull. In book two, like I struggle more with book twos than book threes. You know, mm-hmm. I'm excited at the beginning and the end, but the middle, I kind of usually hit a little valley of, of sorts. This is only relevant to three book APs, which is what sure. we run here. And this on this show, uh, on this particular show, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's 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 like I'm excited for it. You know, I've been looking forward to this, and I'm certainly ready to to wrap up signals of screams and. You know, I, I, it's not like I don't have any idea of what we're going to do. You know, I feel pretty confident in where we're headed, but like, it's just this weird feeling of like bubbling anxiety as we're ramping up towards the end of it, you know? And it, it just, I don't know. It, I, I'm having, I like, I think I'm having more fun playing APA than we've had in a while these last couple of weeks. It's been, I mean, we've been laughing our butts off, uh, having a good time. So I don't want to, give the impression that I'm not enjoying myself or anything like that. There's just, you know, there's a lot of moving parts and like, it's going to, there's going to be some bad shit that happens to you guys throughout this. I mean, you're in the heart of darkness, you know, and just want to make sure I do it right. But that we continue to have fun and that like, 
I can breathe as we get through it, you know. Um, I don't know. I understand. You, I understand your trepidation. I get it. Um, I never feel that because I am, as you all know, the greatest GM. Um, so uh, <laughs> naturally, <laughs> never have to worry about it. Never have to worry about it because our, our show technically, you know, it has well, you no end. Well, you, you don't have to worry about number two or three. You know, yeah, you yeah. don't have books. Uh, you you have at most like a, a three episode book. Yeah, you know, yeah. Right, right, Hacky right. sex is rolling. So you yeah, know, I don't, I don't understand, and I'm sorry, Adam. And, uh, <laughs> no, it, it's it's okay. As I said, like, uh, it's um. It's a motivating feeling, mm. believe it or not. You know, it's just like anxious may not be the right word, but it's just like kind of like a buzzing energy that kind of just kind of is works through me, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so, um, I, I say all this really to just say, uh, sorry for the curse, but it. It's not so bad. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> That's what I heard. Uh, so, so when I first read the curse, I thought this was terrible. And uh, John will even attest that I mentioned to him before that there was a room coming up that I was like, oh, God, if I run this as written, I feel like all of the players are going to hate it. And it's just, we're going to, it's going to go like, just nobody's going to be happy. But I, I, I committed to running it as is. And three of you, did the thing, you know, figured it out, put, 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 uh, what it was is you had to put a level nine or above item in the reclaimer. That's it. A level nine or above item. It wasn't a particular value or anything, just anything that was level nine or above into the UPB reclaimer, uh, protects you from the curse. I have a quandary, a query, a question. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Does it explicitly state? That they cannot return the item with which they were gifted. So, <laughs> so because yeah, yeah. So like it's weird because you know you did that and it it kind of I got hung up on it because it doesn't really explicitly state that particular circumstance. What it does say is if you try if you decide to return the proffered item. You can make a bluff check or a diplomacy check to feign gratitude for being given a gift without accepting it. Uh, but you specifically said thanks, but no thanks. So there was no like, <laughs> there was no feigning gratitude to like try to trick the curse. You know, like you're just like, ah, All no. Right. Oh, and wow. even if you, and the, here's the thing, <laughs> even if you succeeded, Against that bluff or diplomacy check to feign gratitude, it that success doesn't count towards the number of PCs needed to, like, there's a certain number that have to to give back to activate the fountain, which we'll get to shortly because we didn't get to that last time. Um, but so, like, that basically you just like got rid of it didn't make any progress towards the puzzle that you needed to do. And you didn't actually really fake gratitude. So like, yeah, you know, well, I made just the call said, there. Fuck you. That's yeah, what happened. Yeah. And I stand by it. <laughs> so uh, like, here's, here's my issue with it. My thing here, which I, I do, I will say to Adam's point, it's not as bad as we thought it was. Yeah. I was real mm -hmm. mad when it first happened. Same. And then when we like kind of looked at the details of it a little more, like, being mm -hmm. a soldier, I don't use a lot of magical stuff, so that's one of the things. Like, it didn't affect a ton of my stuff. But uh, what messed me up was the, like, one minute, you know? Like, you got to do all that within one minute. Like, I know it's a, you know, TTRPG, and, like, one minute is, like, an important interval for a lot of stuff. But, like, really? Like, we're all supposed to, like, figure this out and throw equivalent items in there within a well, minute? Well, so here's the thing. I gave you guys, like, a good 15 minutes to sort that out so it's not like i had like a timer here going for 60 seconds you know um i did say it's been about five minutes and everybody was like yeah i was like cool so it's definitely been one minute then <laughs> you know <laughs> um, and so you know i it, those types of things are really difficult to run as a gm where the in-game time matters mm -hmm. but like you guys as players are trying to sort things out and i tried to give you enough time to do what you were going to do. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. Um, well, and to be clear, I'm not saying I thought it was unfair on your point. I just think one minute is a little, you know, a little tight for like a whole party of, you know, potentially five or six people because it's an AP and you can do that to like not only figure it out, but like put in the requisite things. Like in one minute, you'd have to be assembly line in that shit. Well, you know? maybe like the, the. It's one minute per person. So like when you take the item, it's a, your, your personal minute clock. Starts. You know oh, I mean? okay. I thought it was just one minute flat, and I was like, right, "That's yeah. that's not how things work." Um. So yeah. So what it comes down to is that the curse only affects hybrid or magical items, which is a significant difference from what we thought. I thought it was all items. Uh, so really, at the end of the day, when we did this in between episodes off air. Uh, Heath or Mike's. Pulse gauntlets were affected, are cursed. Uh, Tenna's shadow chains are cursed. Uh, and all of Tenna's hearing, serums of healing are cursed, which means there's a potential that every time used, 50% chance that they do nothing. And which, I'm- that's brutal. That's brutal because you don't really have a healer here and you're counting on the serums to to and I to ca- account feel for that, like you know? I was holding the majority of our serums because I'm the squishy and uh-huh. yeah so mm. well doesn't it Sorry. also affect my magma blade oh yes and your magma and, blade and is also affected. I have some serums too so yeah yours are cursed as well which is just not great it's not it's just not great um, the good news is. So After I got this, all- like a crystal, right? That's the good news. Yeah, well, that, yeah, <laughs> sure. which you put into strength. Um, the good news is that when this all happens, you know, you've either given the appropriate amount of gratitude or you've been cursed. The fountain in the center of the room begins to function, and a spray of cool, clear water comes out, and a small blue stone then floats to the surface of the water. And this is another very similar stone to the two that you found before. So you now have a black, white, and blue stone. Who wants to hold this MacGuffin? <laughs> Maybe it's a Mark II ability crystal. I'll, I'll take it. I very seriously <laughs> doubt it, my friend. <laughs> uh, yeah, so another thing I, I, I wanted to kind of just emphasize and may, and I'll talk in more detail maybe in our recap but so far each room has had a particular emotion asso- associated with it and I just don't want that to be lost yeah. so with the first one being like love and empathy okay. the the second room being self-assuredness and contentedness and this one with gratitude and being thankful so these are all emotions that you They're wouldn't positive necessarily- emotions. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. It's counterintuitive. Yeah. Think about where you are. We're in a heart. What? Right. Right. That is doing what? Beating. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I love well, that we all kind of look to the side first. Like, is yeah. this the right answer? <laughs> Loading that, in that space. Triggered my teacher vibes so hard. Like, I get responses like, like the base level what a thing does when I'm asking like a more complex question than that. Well, presumably this heart is wrapped around the asteroid, right? As a kind of protective barrier. So just, just some, you know, I'm not going to give it to you or anything. I just want you to mm-hmm. be aware that this, this, there is kind of a trend going through here. Um, uh, so with that being said, we're going to get right back into it here. Um, and there is another passageway that continues even further east, or you can return back to the kind of opening chamber and go to that remaining passageway that you have not explored before. What do you do? Remaining passageway. Remaining Um, passageway. I say we leave. (laughs) I I feel you. That's a good suggestion. Now, I do just want to say I'm not going to waste any time on it, but like, even though I didn't do it in time, I do still want to throw a couple of things in the uh, equipment blender just to clear some space. Yeah. (laughs) Just, Just saying it on air. Throw it in uh in Fell's uh recycler. There you go. I can't open Fell's recycler. <laughs> no. 
I'm, I haven't, I'm not I haven't tried to push the button, though. No. Mm. Well, you sure. could try. Yeah, sure. sure. I disguise myself. I <laughs> as yeah, fail. N- nothing you happens. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, and you just hear a. Ooh, gross! <laughs> You're not fail. Mm. It should be a fail trombone. Yeah. All right. So, which way are you guys gonna go? Um, Let's go to the, the southern route here. Let's uh, just keep we're, going. We're yeah, we're already on this route, so we might as well finish it. You know, the southern route. You mean yonder? Yonder. 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 Right, yonder. If you will. Uh, um, yeah, so it's like a tunnel that goes like deep into the flesh of this heart, and you guys can go ahead and get in your marching order because it's a long tunnel. I, um, it's a. G- I, I was go gonna ahead. say, I wonder, like all these hallways look like intestines. The Drayley mm-hmm. room looked like a freaking kidney. Like I'm wondering mm-hmm. what gross body part the next room is going to look like. Really, we, we're just inside Giant Man. When it's do we just, get yeah. to the gall glabber? It's just a bunch of guts inside of a heart. Also, did you say gall glabber? Gall glab gam gam gall Let's get in there and get that gall gab gam gamber out of there. There's a stint. Uh, yeah, so you guys get in your order. You guys can just move your way down to the hall. You can move to about right here, and then I'll ask you to stop. There you go. Kind of get get yourself situated how you want to get. Because uh, this tunnel, it goes, you know, what? That's about 100 feet in this kind of narrow five-foot wide tunnel. Um, and it, then it opens up onto a small glade of skeletal trees with bony leafless branches spreading into a canopy overhead. A half circle of quiet tombs rises beneath them. Each small structure is delicately carved from red stone and bears loops and whirls of exquisitely carved calligraphy. Four of the tombs are sealed, while a fifth stands open. A battered sword leans next to the yawning doorway and scraps of rusted metal armor are scattered nearby. Uh, the trees here are composed of bone and sprout from the fleshy ground, almost as if in a mockery of nature. The tombs themselves appear to be made of hardened muscle, as heavy as solid as actual worked stone. And you see an ancient-looking woman with stringy gray hair and wrinkled skin, and she is carefully carving images into the lintel above the open door of the fifth tomb. Mike and Kuiper, you would recognize that she is wearing the garb of steward armor. Sedona. Uh, excuse me, miss, is this the restroom? <laughs> uh, she immediately turns and grabs the sword in her handle and says, Who is there? <laughs> Mike. Friend or foe? Mike's like, shut the fuck up, Trelax. <laughs> um, I'll give you a picture here. It'll be in our Discord chat. Hey, can we take bets on what the positive emotion of this room is? I got ten on the piece of death. Uh, friendship. <laughs> <laughs> the real magic we made along the way, or whatever the fuck that is. So yeah, did y'all see the image yeah. there? Yes. So she, she looks very uh, old. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely getting and the, like... And also old. Uh, <laughs> holy She's grail. human. She's like, a human female. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So she, she, you know, she's not holding her sword t- at you, but she like stops with the carving and puts her hand on the grip and kind of looks at you and you know says, "Are you friend or are you foe?" Uh, friend. We can be friends. <laughs> yep. Always Please looking for a new friend. Roll. A diplomacy. <laughs> oh, I'm the guy. Because <laughs> uh, we're such a diplomatic party, you know. I mean, ten is all right, I but she's way hand. in the back. Hand. Uh, that's a twenty-three. Uh-huh. Tina just says, "What's going on?" And she like peeks around everybody's shoulders. That's a, uh, Can I get a diplomacy roll from you two? That's an eight I mean. from the front, my man. <laughs> yeah, Tina. Oh, I can do it. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, I would like to do. Oh, 
Mm, 20. I really can't see very <laughs> That's well. That's an 8 for a 20. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, good news is that uh, Trelax was able to convince her that indeed that you're, you're friends. And uh, she says, all right then. And she just returns to her work. She lets go and starts chiseling on the tomb. Grandma, I think we should get you back to bed. Can we walk up a little bit? Or, I mean, yeah, you go. You can walk. There's nothing else in there but the tombs, the skeletal trees, and the muscle, or uh, and this this woman. <laughs> oh, and the trap. And she's where over here? Yeah. I Tina would walk up closer to her and try and like inspect what she's carving. Like, does it look familiar? Uh, the tombs. Uh, the like upon closer inspection, the writing on each tomb is like confused and jumbled, not forming any actual words or any decipherable iconography. Okay. Uh, Tina would ask her, uh, and so her garb doesn't look familiar to Tina. Obviously, we don't have like right. shadow stewards or whatever. No, no. Um, but she is human. Is that pretty obvious? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um. I mean, Tina would say, What are you doing here? Do you need assistance? Uh, did did yes. she bring you here? Uh, she just looks at you kind of confused and she says, I have waited for so long to finish my companion's tombs, but I can never manage to do it right. I always find some small flaw in the craftsmanship and have to start over again. I don't know if you can help me, but maybe you'll see what my tired eyes cannot. Well, you see, uh, your problem is that when when you are aiming for perfection, you're passing up good enough. <laughs> you know, and you have to, like, lower your <laughs> expectations and accept that... All things in life are flawed and imperfect. But I... It must be. My friends deserve nothing less. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. But I'm just saying, you know, you need to, like... You know, be okay with... With not what having... What trying to say is... That you are putting perfect care into all of these, so that counts. While they're saying that, like, is there any, like, Tina would be, like, eyeballing all the different tombs, you know? Yeah, roll a perception check. There's one open. Is that the one she's there's working on? The, one, the open one is the one she's working on, yeah. 34? Wow, that meets beats. Yay! Nice! Uh, um, you can see that four of the tombs were completed several years ago. And don't look any, like, nicer or more accurate than the one she's currently working on. But the one that she is working on, this fifth one, which is empty, um, has been torn down and rebuilt at least several hundred times. Oh, wow. Um, Are the other tombs, like, are they, like, all of the stuff on them, are they, like, exactly the same? Mhm. Mhm. Um, uh, can I tell this one is there something specific missing or like compared to the other four teams? Well, the difference between this one and the other four is that the other four are sealed and closed and finished and this one has been rebuilt as open and not finished. Um, can I tell? This may be a dumb question. Is she alive? Is she undead? Um. Mm. Is the last tomb for her? Yeah, that's my assumption. She, she is alive. Okay. Uh. She, she is not corrupted. Um. That that you can tell just by looking at her. Okay. 
Um, Tina would just kind of like look around and then look back at her and say, What is your name, friend? It has been so long, my name. It's, oh, yes, yes. Devania is my name. I was going to guess Gertrude, damn. <laughs> I was That's thinking my Mildred. Sister. That's my sister. Mildred would have been a, would have been a good grandma too. Yeah, for sure. Yes, yes. Uh, no, it's it's Devania. I seems like forever ago that that name had any meaning. Devania, is this tomb yours? She stares at you blankly. Um, Doesn't look like anything to me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sir. <laughs> Got Damn. It. Uh. She stares at you blankly, uh, as if she couldn't hear the question, and just says, "Oh, it's not finished yet." I, I, and she like turns and starts chiseling at it again. It's not. It's it's unfinished. Please help. Trelax turns to Mike and in a low voice says. Hey, Mike, help me throw this old lady into the tomb. I think that's the trick. <laughs> he chuckles at him and says, Netflix used to come in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> you dick. Uh, um, you could try to talk to her, but, uh, you know. No, she's um, not giving us much, man. No. She so said, help. She, please she, help. It's, yeah, and it's obvious, like, that she is... She can't lay down herself, you know. Um, mm -hmm. But, okay, so... Do, 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 do. Devania, what... Why are you here? Do you know where you came from? Do you, can you remember how you got here? I... I cannot. I... All of my memories, they have abandoned me. But I cannot abandon my friends. They, they died, and I must lay them to rest. Please help uh, me. Mike uh, thinks to himself for a second and says, uh, All right, Grandma. Um, perhaps you're in need of uh, someone with a strong back and an eye for engineering. I'd love to help if I could. To help in any way he can, I don't. That's the skills I can offer, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, what does she want help with? Uh, here, and she hands you a shovel, and it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't make any sense, you know. That what you're looking at, there's nothing to help her. The tomb is standing there, ready to receive. A, a, you know, a person or body. Her you know. after she's been killed. I'm about to shovel. knock this old lady right. the fuck out, dude. <laughs> I, I was going to say, yeah. Mike looks back over to Trey Lex and is like, mm, you might so, be right. So, shrugs, you know. <laughs> Tenna, roll a mysticism check. Okay. Ooh, 35. Beautiful. Um, yeah, you... you have cor correctly surmised that this tomb is 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 should be her tomb, um, and that she is just reluctant to accept her own death, you know, and that that merely going to lay down in the tomb would break her yeah. of this cycle, you know. She's she's basically been put in this like loop of 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 torture oh, and, and has not accepted that she's that 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 all of her friends have long been buried here and that she's the fifth person so so heath was right so and mm -hmm. also i am right mm -hmm. <laughs> but perfect situation we, yeah before we start bashing in me mall skulls uh tenna would kind of like like touch her on the on the back of like the shoulder you know kind of just mm -hmm. say Oh shit, what's her name? Dev Devania. Devania. I think perhaps you would be able to finish this tomb if you just took a rest for a moment. I think this looks like a good place to lay down. 
We will help you as soon as you are finished with your rest. And can I make a bluff check? Uh, you can make a diplomacy check. I'd prefer a bluff because it's <laughs> higher. Because I'm telling her we're going to help her once once she's finished with her hey, map. Hey, Trelax will aid. A diplomacy? Yeah, if yeah. You won't le- if you won't let me bluff. I'll, I'll, he's can, like, I, can, I, c- can I get Come that? on, Granny. Yeah, Let's you, get you I mean, back you to can bluff. You can bluff if you want. <laughs> you can bluff. I can bluff? Uh-huh. Can you aid with that, Trelax? Well, it's not, it's not really, no, because it's... What you're checking on is if you can convince her to stop yeah. working. Not, not really the, the tricking. You, lie, okay. you can lie to her because she's easily befuddled. You know, yeah. it's really got to be a diplomacy because you're okay. trying to convince her to do something. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I'll do that. And Trelax, can I? Uh, auto mm-hmm. aid on the diplomacy. Yeah. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. What do you say, Trelax? Come on, Grandma. Let's get you to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else want to aid? Come on, operative, do something. I've got a plus four. I mean, all you got to do is roll. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go ahead and... Everybody like, just like, literally oh, everybody can aid. Fail. Yep. I got a 23. 23, eight. that's an aid. Uh, I got a 19, so that's an aid. Eight. Super aid. So, so, so yeah, that's going to be a success. I, got, I want you guys to play this out as a party with this old lady, like all of you, helping Div- Divanya to, to bed. Which is a, a, a tomb. It's like, how, how does that look? Come now, rest. And Gloombot takes uh, the shovel. You have such a dulcet voice. I've never seen a, a robot with such a soothing set of pipes. <laughs> 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 That's what a grandma says. Grandma is yeah. hip, isn't make, she? Make, make she knows you all the newest lingo. <laughs> ah, yes, my. Do you have a TikTok, voice. Granny? <laughs> <laughs> my voice modulator is tuned <laughs> to dulcet tones. To dulcet <laughs> tones. Before TikTok, my. there was Vine. You remind oh me God. of one of my favorite singers from the ancient age. <laughs> Have you ever heard of Jonathan Richmond of the Modern Lovers? No. I think you just missed us. <laughs> you missed me. Is I that mean, a band? I, I mean, I know Modern Lovers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm old. I mean, <laughs> music isn't the, what it once was. We know Adam. <laughs> Do you like Tom Waits? <laughs> uh, I actually I, love Tom Waits. I have to be in. I right could mood. not have guessed thee. <laughs> I I feel like he has a, a interesting voice, but one that you must be in the mood to listen to. Wouldn't you agree, Sonny? Yes. <laughs> Sonny boy. That is very true. <laughs> Uh, I'm so tired. I just, I just, I, I would know. love to rest. Yes, let, yes. let me, let me take that shovel. <laughs> and he ta- he takes the shovel from her because, like, it's a tool that she's got. She's trying to offload. To, uh, that just sounded so it's not right. Right. Yeah, yeah, for that real. Was very really sinister. Menacing. Yeah, it did. <laughs> let me, let me, just out of curiosity, I'm not Real actually check. intimidating <laughs> intentionally. Okay, but if I were to intimidate by grabbing the shovel, that would have been an 18 plus 23. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> Good Get God! In the goddamn tomb, Granny. <laughs> <laughs> Go to sleep now, Granny. <laughs> That's some effective that prune bitch. juice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my, my friends, I, oh, I can't. My poor friends, please, please make sure that uh, that they that they are put to rest. You, you must, you must, you must promise me. Promise me. We we promise, but look, you gotta do right by them and get your own rest. Do you want some hard candy? Is it a word? <laughs> <laughs> it kind of pops up around Mike's shoulder. It's not a word. It's the it's, it's the it's really cheap butterscotch. butterscotch. It's the cheap ass butterscotch. I will take. Yeah, I was the thinking the strawberries. I want one of those. Those are as so long good. as it's not those. It's like a handful. It's a handful of all that kind of stuck together. Oh, yeah, it's like yeah. been in there for like 15 years. <laughs> right. Hoping for a where there's Mike takes it and just like discreetly drops it behind his foot and crushes it with his boot. <laughs> <laughs> she bitch doesn't have where there's. <laughs> <laughs> you are so mean to me, Mom. 
She's on a pension. Leave her alone. <laughs> no, no t- listen. Will one of you tell me a story? Will you read to me? I can't. My my eyes have have failed me, and words are difficult to decipher. Of course. Can somebody read me a story? Of course. Lay down. No, no. We will tell you a story. <laughs> what do you Once know about boxing? <laughs> <laughs> just read her the the Rocky novel. No, no it's just my career highlights. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my God. Uh, actually, if you do that, um, she's, she's like for for half a second, a bit of like awareness comes in her eyes, and she says. Uh, you you and, and some of the oldness comes out of her voice. You're you're Titanium Mike? Oh, you're a fan? Uh, yes, yes, uh I I I, I lost it, it all betting on I, your I, ass, you <laughs> 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 That was my lowest oh. moment. <laughs> uh, Except for uh, all the other it, ones. Well no, uh it my my uh my my father w- was a, a huge fan of yours, and he always talked about uh, uh, about you. Uh, it, but I'm so I'm so confused and I don't understand. It, it, how do I know about you? Why? How am I here? What? Where? What? Shh. <sighs> so tired. Hush, <laughs> hush, little baby, don't <laughs> say a word. <laughs> uh, I, I'll have to tell my dad that I... <laughs> Put the lid on her quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, Is she I'm actually very confused sleeping? by all this. I'm sorry. Yeah, because she's an old lady, like, I'm but for, her like, dad... Mike's so old she, for a boxer, but she's he's not old. <laughs> yeah. Clearly she's not actually old, right? Like, yeah. She's cursed, man. She's yeah. cursed. Mm-hmm. 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 Is she in the tomb? Take, an, take an inspiration. Because, like, go back and look at the All picture. Right. She Her her face, like, the skin, like, it, it's, it's like a young person with yeah. makeup on to look old. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Indeed. Look at those fact, eyes. Let's just do a round of inspirations across the board. Why not? Why not? Yay! You know. I like that. Okay. All right, so Zach, uh, roll a d6 to see if you get a personal. Okay. Three. You do not. So you don't get any. Okay, oh. fine then. <laughs> Damn. Uh, all right, this one is going to be from, ooh, Grumpus. Hey. Grumpus. All right. Groom House. Sh- Groom House. It's short and sweet. Here we go. Boom! Inspired. I feel <laughs> extremely inspired. The classic that. John Madden <laughs> inspiration. Yeah. I like it. What you got to do is use the inspiration uh-huh. on the die roll. Yep. That inspiration That's how you win the gets game. you a plus three to your roll. Yes. And if you, you got a plus three, that it. means you could potentially get a higher roll than you could without it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace, John. Man. Uh, right next to Devanya. Uh, all right, who's next? Who 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 wants to roll their d6? I will. All right, go for it, Josh. As a six. Oh, that's a personal. Look Me. at you. All right, uh, roll a d10. All right. Let me find one of those. Uh, eight. Eight. This is a J laptop. Oh, hey, J laptop. Pretty soon we're going to run out of his, but that's all right. Here it is. Today, you are you. That is truer than true, and there is no one alive who is gloomier than you. <laughs> Aww. Thank you. Some Very good. All right, who's next? wisdom there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. for real. Uh, oh, I will. I'm sorry. All right, go for it, Emily. Roll a d6. Click. Vun. Hey, right, that's a personal for you too. Who's that? All right, roll a. Roll a d8. Could have been a d8. It's a six. A six. 
All right. Uh, this one is from Jimmy T. Jimmy T. Oh, that's a, uh, Jimmy T. <laughs> Squee! I'm so happy <laughs> and inspired. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm so happy. I'm so happy and inspired. <laughs> wow. uh, all right, John, Heath, which one of you going to jump on? Uh, I just rolled a one. All right, that's uh, personal for you too, bud. Nice. I need you to roll a D8. Boom, tough acting to Uh That's a three. <laughs> that's, a, that's a three. Uh, this is from Porter Paladin. Hey, Porter Paladin. My boy. <laughs> Good morning, Porter. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> if the toughest goddamn vest anyone has ever seen falls in the forest, the forest gets the hell out of the way before it hits the ground. <laughs> damn. Goddamn, damn. damn. <laughs> That's a good one, Porter. That is brilliant. That's a good pretty one. Pretty good. All right, and John, last but probably least. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Uh, four. Mm-hmm. That's a general. No personal for you. All right. All right. And we're going to stop here on a clue inspiration. Clue. Okay. Clue. Kluga. Kluga. Uh, Kluga. Kluga. It's oh, Slavic. Yeah. <laughs> Abides. It's Kluaka. <laughs> My God. Here it is. Kluk abides. Take comfort in that. <laughs> That's okay. It. That's it. I love it. Our clue <laughs> abides. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Cool. Inspirations all around, and you close the tomb. Good night, Granny. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Next time, get some Werthers. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, I no. drop one of the last strawberry candy. I drop it in the tomb and close it. <laughs> um. So she did leave her sword. Outside of the tomb. Ooh, wow. So there's that. Uh, it is a perfectly serviceable zero edge longsword. Hmm. Which, I mean, you know, it's be good for Ziva, but she isn't here. Hold on to that shit. <laughs> is it, is it like an agile weapon or whatever? Like a, a dex weapon? Uh, I'm about to find out. So for that, it is a. It's an advanced melee weapon. Mm -hmm. It is not. Uh, it's not an operative weapon, so it's not dex based. It does do seventy eight slashing, and it has the severe wound critical effect. Oh, Jesus. oh, we taking that? <laughs> <laughs> Put that shit in your pocket, man. Yeah. yeah. All right. Boom, boom, boom. That is a. It's a light bolt too. So. 7d8. Yes. Yeah, this is a level 14 item, so it's a good Oh my good get. goodness. Yeah. Thank you, it's Granny. Good. And it's not cursed. <laughs> nice. Oh, super yeah. awesome. what, which is great wow. because my other sword is cursed. <laughs> right. Uh, what, what was it uh, called? So I can look it up. Uh, a zero edge longsword. Um, and since you have successfully laid Devania to rest, the dead branches that are in this glade suddenly bloom with red flowers dripping with blood Ew. as the first <laughs> of these drop <laughs> as the first of these drops uh, hit the ground it transforms into a small red stone with Did your it, powers combined mm -hmm. yeah uh, we're, so, we're gonna be able to summon Captain Planet soon that's the heart stone I, don't, mm -hmm. I think uh, Tina puts that fourth stone into her gauntlet. There you <laughs> there go. go. There yeah. it is. Uh, well, and that's a that's a dead end here in this chamber of the heart. Um, very interesting uh, little encounter there. I remember first reading that and be like, okay, this is weird. Um, I will just go ahead and give you some some history on Thank this, you. I, just for funsies. Uh, Devanya was a human steward agent who, along with several team members, took their starship out on a mission several years ago and never returned. They were accidentally pulled into the shadow plane while investigating a disturbance linked to diasporan space pirates driven mad by Dr. Gargant's shadow signal. So if you remember Whoa. all way the way back, yeah. back to the prologue of this yeah. adventure, they were going to investigate 
that. Wow. And she wow. got pulled into the shadow plane and has been stuck there ever since doing this loop over and over and over. That's Holy nuts. crap. Mm-hmm. Uh, rest in peace, Devanya. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was, that's that. So that leaves only one chamber left to go. You gotta go all the way back to the front. We sprint. Sprint. We, we, right, well, no, we fatigued. Uh, no, no, thank we, you. What is it called? <laughs> we Run? skip. Oh, skip. skip. Okay. Are we skipping? Right. We skip. skip. Are we really like just prancing through the, the yeah, heart you're, of darkness you're like, here? Yeah, huh? you're, you're like, you're like, uh, uh, Wizard of Oz, you know, like yeah. Dorothy and, and the crew just on the way to because see the doctor, the wonderful do, doctor do, of, do. of of Shadow Oz. Probably not. Probably mm. not. All right. All right. So y'all do need to get in marching order as you move into this hallway. So you've moved back around the south, back up to the middle, and there's this middle hallway that, uh, and please don't go beyond where I'm pinging here. Um, and so as you go down this hallway, it opens up into a room. Um, and you see in the room, I guess Trey likes you in the front. Uh, where's Mike? Where's yeah, Mike? Mike? Mike decided he's just. Are you on top of somebody? Heath never moves his token because he's too good to actually do anything. He's too good. I decided to live out the remainder of my days with a dedicated fan, you know? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I'll just That's stay right. here. Um, so, so, yeah. It's only going to get worse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you see a gaping wound in the flesh of the floor occupying the center of this room. Gross. It is ringed by a circle of dark metal and electronics that seem to keep the bloody tear open and project a nearly invisible field of force over it. The rest of this chamber is dotted with slowly spinning columns of obsidian embedded with nails, spikes, and other sharp objects and draped with rusting chains. A low moan, it is impossible to tell whether it is one of pain or pleasure, echoes throughout the area, its source indeterminable. You also see what looks to be... um, Hold on. Some other things... What are they? Some things. They're things. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so there's things here. Uh, that you also see these slowly rotating pillars of, uh, what looks like spiked veins. Just rolling around, rolling around. And, yeah, it's those, obsi- it's those obsidian columns, but they're, they're rotating with all this, like, sharp objects and stuff like that. And you see hovering about 20 feet up in the air in the back of this room a Strix. Ooh. Oh, shit. Uh, and I need is that time? everybody to roll initiative. Oh, Holy I crap. Whole right. oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. Oh, crap. <laughs> oh, crap. Oh, goodness. <clears throat> Poop. Ooh, not ideal. We are not great. Not ideal on the roll. Do uh, you guys want to see what this Strix actually looks like? I know you've been oh, waiting yes. and waiting. Uh, <laughs> all right. Boom. She's a badass. Looks like the Weeping Angel. Damn. Where? Oh, okay. Uh, she's got a pretty gnarly mohawk. Ooh, yep. girl. Yeah, that's really cool. I like it. That's a faux hawk. Ah, uh, uh, no, yeah, dude, so she's got like that's definitely a mohawk, that, and, and she's got like big, big hawk. white feathery wings. Like the her feathers are white, and they kind of arch up. Yes, like kind of almost angelic. And she's in these this tactical armor, and she's hovering uh, above, like floating in the air. Um, and we are going to. You can jump right into combat. Everybody rolled their garbage initiative, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Can I what, just uh, say that she looks a lot like Naomi Nagata from The Expanse? 
Oh yeah, she sure bit, does. Yeah. Oh wow, you don't. Yeah, but like like bluish white skin, grayish white skin. She's and got, yeah, she's probably just as useless as Naomi to got it too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> damn! Shots, oh, fire. shots fired. Yeah. Listen, I said it, okay. <laughs> I said uh, it. I yeah, that was it. a mistake. <laughs> Half the problems in that show. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, all right, okay. I'm not, I don't want to spoil mm-hmm. it. I don't want to spoil it. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So let me just see if we got everything right here. <sighs> there are also two. Kyle operatives in this room and they rolled the best initiative I, I guess we didn't say initiative Zach what did Trelax get okay oh. <laughs> move on alright <laughs> Emily what did Tenna get uh 13 not great what about Kuiper 19 also not super comparatively yeah. what about uh Mike 16 oh man and Gloombot 13 Okay, that's bad. That's yeah. real bad. We are where, Adam? <laughs> um, Who are you talking see. to, man? I think that I'm going to have to actually make a move here to get a shot on Mike. All right, he's going to move up next to one of these rotating things, and I actually have to move right here. So, Mike, you see this Eclipse operative kind of move their way in front of you. And is going to take a ranged shot or trick attack, actually. Uh, so here we go with the trick. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get it, but let's just go with the uh, 39. <laughs> is going to definitely be a successful trick. So let's go with the attack. The attack. Is that a successful Wait, does, trick on trick, Mike? Doesn't a trick have to be 10 more than my KAC? It's 20 plus... No, the trick is equal to 20 plus your level. Oh, that's right. Which is 32. So that, that, that 39 it. will will succeed on the trick. You are flat-footed against this attack. Uh, a 30 against your... Flat-footed KA, KAC? It's going to be EAC. Uh, well, that'll hit. All right. That is going to deal a total of 22 points of damage. That's including the trick attack damage. Um... That's electric damage, and you are going to be off target Okay. for a round. So go ahead and put off target on your sheet. Uh, and that will be the operative's turn. The next person in initiative order is the other operative, who is also going to have to move mm-hmm. and is going to take a shot on Mike. Mike, you're going to get a little cover on this. Uh, But let's see if I succeed on the trick again with another trick attack coming at you. Yeah, 38, so that succeeds on the trick. You'll be flat-footed against this EAC, but you're getting a little bit of cover, so we're just going to go right against your actual EAC. And that is going to be a 33 against your EAC. That will hit. All right, that hits again. Again, with this time we're going to get you for 36 points of damage and you are going to be flat footed so you're off target flat footed and guess whose turn it is now it is the Strix's turn and oh boy what is they are they going to do mm. She is going to float above the pillars so she can see everybody and is going to... Mike, you're just in the front, bud, so you're getting it, man. Yeah, that's my job. Uh, I need you to roll a will save. Is it against the fear effect? No. Okay. Uh, That's a 19. That is a fail. Yeah, I thought it might be. I have just cast Bestow Curse upon Mike. You are cursed. Let me just make sure I'm doing... Oh, fuck! Yay! We're going to have to take that all back. It is a touch spell. (laughs) Yay! (laughs) Eat shit! (laughs) All right, well... 
<laughs> Give me another will save, you son of a bitch. Actually, let me see. What is my range here? Nope. What's my range on this? What's my range again? What's my range? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Adam, just don't waste your time on me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I need... A- why didn't it roll? Let's get this. Let's go. Get it together, man. I, I don't understand why it's not. <laughs> He's nervous. Up. I am nervous. Mm. All right. I'm sorry. I don't know why it's not doing what it's supposed to do. That's how I feel at work every day. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like I'm editing a word document. It's like, why won't it just do what it's supposed to do? Uh, I just met children. <laughs> Just children. Just children. Where's the instructions? This child came with no instructions. It's <laughs> some bullshit. There's like two in particular. I wish they had came with instructions. <laughs> They'd be oh. in Portuguese right. if they did. All right, so I have to make an attack roll. Okay. Okay, so this is a ranged attack roll against your EAC. Okay. So that is going to be a dirty 30. And remember, you are flat-footed. Against the AC, you said? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'll mm-hmm. hit. Okay. So then... I saw I shoot this black ray of innervation at you. Uh, you will gain two temporary negative levels. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I think... We'll see you on that. What? You would. You would. You just love to poke the bear. (laughs) I'm going to whip your fucking ass next episode. Yeah, I was going to let you guys actually take a turn on this episode. No, 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 no. Damn it. And apparently I have to research these characters' abilities to make sure I got it all there. I I mean, you have a shit ton of operatives at your disposable, so, you know? Well, and, like, you know, to be fair, like, I have to research this character all the time. And I've been playing it for years. 